And I think we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another devlog. Hello, Simon. Welcome. It's your first Hi. time on here. It is. How are you? How are you doing? I'm. I'm, I'm great. I, I had a, a nice free free day weekend. May first was a public holiday in Germany. So. All right. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Ah. So you had a. Did you do anything fun? Yeah, we we went to the zoo with with our child and uh, the neighbors and their child. So ha having kids oh. and going to the zoo is a, yeah, is something Very, everyone yeah. does. I, I can imagine. Kids. <laughs> so, so when you're not going to the zoo, um, you've been, uh, you've been working probably not during the weekend, but, um, during the weeks on some new stuff, right? Uh, I hear yes. Svelte 4.0, um some image component and uh yeah so that's going to be interesting to hear about but first uh we we wanted to talk a bit about the it's kind of old news at this point i guess but it's still something very nice that i'm not sure that most people know about it yet and it's the fact that you can you can now use the data uh, prop without importing types i guess do you wanna do you wanna show us what 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 that's about? Yeah, sure. So um, just let me set up Get this going real quick. Okay, here we go. All right, share my screen real quick because it's easier to show than tell. Yeah, and which window? God, no. Okay. Like this. So Paolo is asking in the chat, when are we going to get SvelteKit version 7? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have to get out SvelteKit version 2 first, but uh, so someday we'll, we'll probably get there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Here's, here's your yeah, screen. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so what's this about? Um, as, as you said, it's, uh, it's uh, been released for a while already. Uh, when you're working with SvelteKit, you have these uh, page uh, plus page uh, files. Uh, and in this case, I have a plus page.server.ts file. And inside I have a load, load function and I have a export comps pre-render equals true setting to say this, this page needs to be pre-rendered. And to, to type all that, I have to import, in this case, a page server load event from yep. the dollar types. Um, so the, the audience is just, asking to, yes. for you to increase the, the font size even more. Even more, okay, even more. That should that should be enough. Um, yeah, and so this what what this does is um, to to give you a a input type which contains everything specific uh, to the to the root. So, for example, if I had a a a, um, a required parameter inside the root, uh, I would have this typed in here. So, if I had like event params, and then in this case, I know ASD is not a valid params in this root because it's like generating the correct types based on the folders behind the scenes. And so I get this load uh, function and then I return something from that. And in my plus page.svelte file, I then also have to oops, import this uh, page data uh, interface from also dollar types, which then contains the correct uh, structure like foo string in this instance, because that's what I've returned from here. Right. And what we found is that it's very nice that this is like full end-to-end -end type safety, like I, I return something from my load function and I have it typed in here, so if I change something to food, it tells me, hey, this is no longer 
incorrect, uh, no longer correct because uh, the property food does not exist. It, it's food now. Um, so that's very nice. But one, one thing that's a little bit cumbersome is that you have to import all these things from dollar types every time. And so we thought, why can't we like just get, get rid of that? And so we worked on just the tooling that. and <laughs> and did just that. So <laughs> so I, I've got rid of all the types and it still tells me, hey, this data prop is still typed as food string. And likewise, I can get rid of the type in here. And it will oh, still so be... Nice typed uh, exactly as it is like i can see that fetch is this equivalent to the native fetch api so that's the that's the docs of of that uh, event like i can still do params asd and it will still error because there's still no yeah. root param named asd in there and i i get this for free without having to type anything anymore uh, and that's very nice and i also get it for uh, my top level export so if i no longer know okay what was it what was it again pre-ren oh, and then it's also ready uh like gives me autocomplete and tells me hey this is you can do pre-render in here and if i then uh, type true to it um it works but if i i don't know make a mistake for example i do pre-render it will now tell me hey this is an invalid export valid export are these or anything with an underscore. So it tells me right in the IDE, not just at runtime, that, that will happen too, but also right in the IDE. And that same uh, is true for the value. So if I, for some reason, uh, mistype the value, it will also tell me, hey, the string true is not assignable to type Boolean or auto. So I even get type safety in, in, in new places I, I haven't had before that's nice and so yeah so it's it kind of feels like uh you're you're getting typescript without having to write the typescript in a in a way that's true yeah it's it's <laughs> getting getting in type safety without having to write the types yourself and um yeah more precisely you no longer write the types and uh, the the typescript plugin and the spelled language tools they write the types behind yeah. the scenes so uh for, for VS Code, you just need the, the latest uh, version of the VS Code extension, and then it's like automatically set up correctly. If you're using uh, a different IDE, you have to install the latest uh, version of the language tools, well, language tools, and for the TypeScript, um, for, for, for TypeScript files to get it working in there, you also need to install the Svelte TypeScript plugin, which then behind the scenes, inserts the type. So th this is what we see, but what the um, what, what TypeScript sees is basically something like this. Right, yeah. So, and, and this part is like auto-generated, inserted behind the scenes for you. So, so you don't have to do this yourself. And the same is true for uh, the data prop in here. It's like import. Types. That makes sense. We just don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. It so doesn't see it. Does this also apply to the actions? If we want actions in our page? Yes, this also applies to actions. So I can do actions and then I do it default and I do this and then I get the cookies fetch and so on typed. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. And does that does that work? So if you return something from, from the form, like does the form get typed as well? So if I do this and then I do form. I assume this is going to be yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's nice. So <laughs> are there other places where, where we could do something like this to, to improve the experience? I guess this, this would be like the, the, the main 
uh, like place where we'd want this. Yeah, this, sure this is the main place where it makes sense. Um, there are a few other places where it make uh, where it works too. Like uh, if you have a book server TS and you export handle from it, then this is also fine. So oh, nice. it works in books server TS and client TS as well. And uh, if you have a parameter, I don't know, uh, what is it, params? Yeah, I, it's not a super common feature. Yeah, I, it, it's, so, it's so uncommon that I don't remember the syntax myself. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's typed as a string, so. Yeah. So All right, works. cool. I even yelled at me here, like, hey, <laughs> this function must return a value. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I really, so a side note, like, I, I really like the, the parameters. Like, when you, when, if you, if you have, like, a, uh, a situation where you want, like, maybe categories as well as, like, a, I don't know, like a page number or something. I find yeah. That's, that's pretty nice. But, yeah. It is. Cool. So, so this, this feature, was it uh, complicated to implement? Well, the, the, the POC was very quick to implement, like, okay, I, I have to do this uh, in that place, and I have to do that in that place. And uh, it was especially easy because I had sort of a blueprint already because um, uh, one of the developers uh, from Next.js actually did something very similar with the TypeScript uh, oh. with a TypeScript plugin. So this is where we got the inspiration from to do this. And uh, so I basically said, uh, saw how how he like accomplished it and uh, then could do a little proof of concept how how it works for us. And then the the bulk of the work was getting it uh, to be uh, performant enough that it's uh, like works on, on, on every keystroke and uh, to basically implement all the all the rules like yeah. what are the top level exports that are allowed for the different uh, plus page files what are the different interfaces I need to auto import and so on so so it was uh, uh, yeah this this was all like grunt work which which took the bulk of the work yeah so are, are you using so this is interesting to me. Like, what, what what are you, are you using like Svelte preprocess to to inject like the imports or like how how does it how does it work? Maybe it's maybe it's complicated, and I'm asking very <laughs> tough questions here. I don't know. <laughs> um, no. So so what this uh, it's 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 directly built into the Svelte language tools. So which is why you need the latest version oh, of the I Svelte see. language tools. Oh, okay. Together. Okay. So. Like a, a little, let's see, do I have this open somewhere? Yes. I have to increase the font size here as well, I know. Just let yep. me see. <laughs> like a representative example. I don't know, like the store or something. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Um, the zoom in begin. All right, nice. Okay, so this and that. Okay, so little little peek under the under the hood. How how does uh, Svelte intelligence actually work? Um, I mean, this this is not what uh, the the language server actually sees in order to provide, provide the intelligence. And yep. so uh, what, what we do under the hood is uh, take, take this Svelte code and run it through the Svelte parser and then transform it into some TypeScript equivalent code, which only like it, it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's not a valid runtime construct or anything, but it's just there for type checking. So right. this input where I import some readable store and have a, a wait block and then do something is transformed under the hood into something 
like this. Oh, so wow. The, the readable <laughs> stays the same. Then there's some under the hood creation of the dollar store variable through some uh, hidden function. And then inside there, we do something like create element P. So we, we do that so that we can type check the valid attributes of the oh, P right. element in this case. And then the, the, the way it is transformed to something like this. And so it's, it's very like, it's not <laughs> optimized neither for readability nor for <laughs> running this uh, in any yeah. way. Uh, it's just there for type checking. And so this is what, uh, what it's transformed to under the hood. And this, and for, let's see, do we have a, uh, how I have to, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a, for, for an example of the, of the type for example thing. of the, of the type thing. Yeah. You can see that it's okay. I I can't find one right now, but we have a little playground, so I'm just going to. Oh, so you can uh, test yes, this out can, live, basically. Yes, I can, and I file name. I'm just going to tell it that's plus page dot svelte file, so it knows. Okay, this, uh, yep. this data prop is special, and then when I run that, uh, hope it works. Oh, this one's called index dot svelte. I don't know if that matters. No, that that doesn't matter for the, for okay. the output, and so. This is the. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's very small. Yeah, I, I'm just going to copy it into here. Oh. And there you can see that it uh, auto inserted this imports types page data thing in here. Oh, yeah. So that's... it's basically built into our tooling that it knows okay, if this is a Svelte kit specific file, this is the data export, and then it inserts the uh, or corresponding page data type in there. So no preprocessor or anything is uh, built right into the tooling. Yep. So pa Paolo is asking in the in the chat here, he's desperately deep into Svelte language server, uh, trying to make this work with uh, Svelte lab. Um, who, who can he talk to to get some help? Or where should he look for for this kind of help stuff. for the Svelte language server, or yeah, I, I assume he, he wants help like figuring out where where things. I I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so so okay. uh, on Discord, um, I'm around in, in in hashtag language tools, which is the channel for uh, the Svelte tooling, like the Prettier plugin, the the language tools. Uh, just just go into that channel or. You can also ask in uh, hashtag contributing, uh, I don't know, something like, hey, I, I want to add this and that. Does that make sense? Are you interested in that? How can I achieve this? Can you give me some pointers and so on? OK. All right. So uh, I think that's it for, for the type yes. uh, zero, zero typed types, zero effort types. Well, zero effort called? types, yes. Yeah, cool. So, sorry. So let's let's talk a bit about um, Svelte four, or four point zero, or what, what do you call it? Four four point zero beta at next. Svelte four. I don't know. Just, Svelte, just Svelte, Svelte four. four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so what have you been doing? You, I've been seeing a lot of activity on on GitHub. Yeah. So, about like um, to. First, maybe a step back, like what's the general roadmap uh, for this yep. for this year, hopefully. Um, so we want to get out a Svelte 4th, um, like I hope, maybe even this month, let's see. Um, wow. And it, 
and it uh, it's uh, it's like a small smaller major release. So it, it 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 won't be like whoa, this is like big on features and many breaking changes, this and that. This is mainly, I'd say, this is mainly a maintenance release. So doing a major release allows us to get rid of old node versions. Um, it allows us to uh, to, to, to bump the minimum required TypeScript version in case you're using TypeScript. Like uh, we can write, uh, like you, we can use type syntax that d didn't exist in version three point something, which is the uh, the the currently supported version of, of Svelte free. And so, yeah, I, I mean Svelte. Cell free has been almost four years out now, so yeah, it's it, I mean it has so so many has so many things have changed uh, since then, and so we feel like it's it's overdue to, uh, yeah, like dust off uh, here and there and uh, bring bring tooling up to date, and um, so so yeah, and so so it won't be like uh, many like new new features or something it, it won't have many breaking changes either uh, aside from the minimum required node version and so on um for the for the few changes we have uh which which are breaking we have uh like a, a migration guide for each of them and uh, for almost all of them we also have a migration script so for oh, example awesome. one 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 type definition uh, was deprecated and will Likely be removed in Svelte five or Svelte six, and so we have a auto migration script which uh, replaces that import with a new uh, recommended one, stuff like that. Um, right, and so so the, the the main work we're we're doing in Svelte four is probably under the hood, which is that we are transforming the Svelte repo into a mono repo with pnpm and change sets. Basically the same we have with Svelkit already, um, just that we have like a familiar feel across repositories. So when we're switching, it's not like oh, oh how how do I do this now? Um, and right. So, yeah. And this this will 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 help greatly with that. And also we're um, do, doing like the TypeScript to JS doc um, transformation under the hood. Like yep. the, the the thing that the, uh, the controversial thing. yeah <laughs> con controversial thing right uh, <laughs> which which will have no impact whatsoever on the on the user um, so it, it's just like internally how how we write the code um, yeah and so so these are probably the the biggest things uh, that are happening under the hood and then once Svelte four is out we will immediately start working on Svelte five. So Svelte 4 is merely a stopgap, so to speak, on, on our road to, to the real <laughs> big right. next release, yeah. which will be Svelte 5. And the for Svelte 5, we want stuff. to look at, yeah, the, yeah right, that's the, where the real exciting stuff will, will happen. Yeah. Yeah, what, what kind of, uh, so, so let's, let's talk a bit about like, what, you've, uh, what you've done more specifically with 4.0. I saw yesterday, I think, or did the day before, uh, I don't know if it was a PR merge, but it was something connected to, to um, what, what are they called? Web components. Yes, web components. You closed like custom elements. Yeah, custom elements. So <laughs> I saw you closed like 10 issues or something and you even yeah, said, like, yeah, oh, I, I yeah. finally <laughs> closed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. Like authoring web components or custom elements in, in Svelte uh, was always possible, but there were, were a lot of rough edges, uh, uh, which were never like quite addressed. Um, but for Svelte 4, we like we have the opportunity to just rethink how 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 that's done under the hood and open up a lot of new possibilities uh, and close a lot of like pending open issues we yeah. have. So. So if there's like one headline feature for Svelte 4, it's probably that custom element uh, authoring will be a million times better than in Svelte 3 because it, it basically removes uh, most of the friction we've seen on the uh, issue tracker. So 
Right. Like the probably the the, the biggest uh, annoyance is that once you opt into writing custom elements, you toggle uh, toggle it once in your Svelte config that you now output custom elements, but then you're required to create custom elements for all components. So like every component is a custom element component. So even if I don't know you're creating a uh, I don't know a component library which has two or three public, publicly uh, exposed uh, web components. And internally, you're using like 10 other components because right. you don't want to have a 10,000 line uh, code file or something. Right. Yeah. And uh, so far, what, we, what you would uh, have to do is to create these as custom element components as well, which is, oh, inside which, which is not very nice. Um, <laughs> For, for oh. the authoring experience and also like uh, passing through slots or uh, styling things or passing through context, all these things were therefore not possible or very broken. Um, also things like uh, the, the life cycle of the uh, custom element wasn't, wasn't that great because the custom element uh, creates itself, uh, but it's not like, inserted into the DOM at that point. There's a, like there are two different uh, events when when the element is actually inserted to, into the DOM, at which point it's like, it's created now. And yeah. one other in element uh, event when it's removed from the uh, DOM, uh, like this is destroyed now. And uh, the previous version didn't like really uh, work, work like that because as soon as the custom element was created, it already fired the creation event. So that was probably too soon. And uh, it never really fired the destroy event unless you manually uh, uh, right. um, manually triggered it. And so this is, this is fixed as well. Um, and the way we do this under the hood is that we no longer make this uh, like uh, Previously, we created a different kind of class that was exported from the um, Svelte, like the, the tr transpiled JavaScript file. And what we do now is we keep the original Svelte component version, but we also create a wrapper version of that component using a wrapper, uh, which then takes this component and uh, wraps it into a custom element uh, class which then uh, does, does this. And so internally, it still is a regular Svelte component, but from the outside, it's uh, now a custom element. And this gets rid of a whole bunch of uh, problems at once. And so this is why this closed about, I don't know, 10 issues and five pull requests. So yeah, Th this That's is why awesome. I said I, I never closed this many issues at once with one <laughs> PR before. Very satisfying, I assume. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, gu I guess this brings brings uh, custom elements up to par with like the regular Svelte experience of kind of. Yeah, I, I, I'd say so. It, it also brings a, a few new features. Like um, one one request we had uh, was uh, like you if you have the the property name does not necessarily uh, reflect the attribute name. So. If you have your custom element instance, uh, you can through the, like you have a property foo and then you can do custom element instant dot foo and then set this right. to, to something new. But uh, you could also do this through uh, the, the HTML, HTML string. So like right. uh, open your custom element tag foo equals something. And that's fine for uh, simple, properties, but maybe there are properties which are camel cased and you want the corresponding attribute to be a uh, dash. Okay. What, right. What's the, yeah. I yeah. yeah know, it's, the, it's called a dash, like the, the dash case. Yeah. But that is camel cased and kebab, kebab cased. I think it's kebab cased, right? Yeah. Like they, they have I... all, they all have weird names. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 There's yeah, cases but, but well, yeah, right? that's a dash in the name. And so, um, and to, to do that, uh, we, we now uh, have enhanced the Svelte options where you uh, specify the, the tag for the custom elements. And uh, you can now also get it, give it 
like a configuration object where you say, okay, this property, which has this prop name, has this corresponding attribute name, and so you can like uh, do it uh, as you want with the, with the dash, or you could even give it a completely different attribute name if you want. Hmm. And uh, what's it also? Uh, what we also added is uh, that you can now reflect the value of the property back uh, to to the attribute, which is sometimes necessary. So, for example, if you have a styling and you say if the custom element host has the this attribute set, then I want to give this a different color or something. And um, you can then say, okay, if this property is set, then I want to like reflect this uh, back to the attribute value so that it changes in the DOM as well. Um, and the last thing we added is that when going from attribute to the property or back, uh, right uh, previously, it, just was all strings. So everything was, was assumed to be a string and it still is by default, but you now can also specify that it's a Boolean or a number or an object or an array. And so it like does the correct uh, tra transformation like from string to a JSON object or a string to a number and back. And so this 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 level of configurability wasn't wasn't there before, and we we added that because uh, we realized that um, for the for for probably eighty percent of uh, the use cases, it's it's fine to just have the defaults. But once you like need more configuration, uh, have more custom stuff, then it's really handy to to have these. And so yeah. so we've added those as well. Well, that sounds sounds very exciting for for custom element users. I'm not one, but yeah. I know I know a bunch all, of them. All five of them. I, I, or I don't know. I, I don't know how many people write uh, custom elements. Uh, with, I, fe with I feel like it's it's very popular, like custom elements in general, probably popular in like micro front end kind of situations. Yeah, I, so. I, I think so. So yeah. yeah. And so we, we, we didn't want to leave this group of people behind who like really like Svelte, but also want to write custom elements. And then we thought, yeah. okay, we like we've 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 got to address these issues, and so uh, we did yeah. with that. So yeah, cool, exciting to 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 see that being released. Um, all right, uh, I think uh, the next topic is something a lot of people are excited about. Um, you've been hammering away on some kind of new new component for for Svelte. <laughs> Right. Yeah, a Svelte image component or a Svelte kit image component. So, yeah, this is like one of the one of the things we uh, deliberately left out until uh, until now because uh, at first it sounds really easy. Like, how hard can it be to to have a image tag and then do some uh, I don't know different create a different image. Uh, with a different resolution and show it based on the uh, screen size of the user. And I mean, it's source set and sizes are the attributes you, you need for that. And so like, how hard could it be? And, but, but the devil's in the details. And uh, there are so many, like there's so many nuance and so many possibilities you can configure it. And uh, like, the, and this is why we like, backed off from it uh, until now and uh, but but we need some like first party solution for this and so we're starting that now yeah. so uh, i i guess one of the the issues here is that like so there are a lot of services that do this for you right you have like Vercel has one cloudflare has one netlify right. probably has one everyone has one and yeah. I'm, I'm sure the api is like slightly different depending on each provider in some yeah, way right which makes it even harder, um, but yeah. So right. So I, I guess we did we didn't really tell tell the the audience what an image component really is for. So it's basically for yeah. for doing source uh, source sets, I guess, for images uh, using the pic picture element, and so so you can serve different um, width sizes of images depending on screen size and stuff like that. Does, does right. that kind of summarize it? 
Yeah, you, you you don't necessarily need the picture element. That that's another thing. Like when when do I need the picture element? Right. When when's the <laughs> image element enough? So there's <laughs> many different uh, possibilities. But yeah, in in essence, uh, an image component is necessary because um, you don't want to serve your two thousand times two thousand uh, high resolution image to mobile users, which only have like a uh, 600 with pixel screen. You don't want to do that because that's uh, wasted bandwidth for them. And that also hurts uh, your web vital score, therefore, because then like Lighthouse or I don't know, yeah. the auditing tool say, hey, you can save bandwidth for the user when you don't serve as high resolution images here. Yeah. And you, um, and you save you save money as well if, if whatever host you're using is, is expensive that's true. On, the, on the bandwidth side. It's true, and also like the, the 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 image format you serve. So modern browsers have AVIF, which is a uh, uh, very very good and at at like lossy uh, transformation. So it almost looks like the same, but uh, it's smaller in size. Then there's WebP, which is also a very good image uh, format for the web. But older browsers don't support that. They like for this, you need to fall back to PNG or I don't know JPEG and so on. And so th these are the things you all, all need to take into account. And then you don't want to do this manually for every image. So you want want to have something which you grab off the off the shelf and which for ninety nine percent of your use cases just does the does the right thing in an, in an opinionated way. And um, so the, the, something like that was, uh, yeah, missing so far from uh, from for Salt Kit. Uh, that that is to say that there are a lot of existing solutions out there already. Uh, like you can uh, use uh, general um, purpose packages like Unpick, which is uh, really recent and does a nice job of uh, transforming your source. Uh, to to something uh, which the image CDN uh, can use, but it can't do image optimization at build time, for example. Right. And then there are also a lot of uh, uh, image components, uh, like two or three for Svelte specifically. And then there's a more generic Vite image tools, which you can use to uh, do do this image optimization generation at at build time. So. Right. Basically, it transforms your you import an image from from somewhere on 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 disk in your project, and then uh, Vite or whatever you use sees that and uh, gives it to in this case Vite Image Tools, and then Vite Image Tools uh, transforms the image to the uh, specified sizes and image formats under the hood, and gives you back pointers to where uh, these uh, generated images are stored. And so these are like the existing uh, use cases, but um, yeah, need, like for once, neither were like first party or blessed. So uh, um, people could absolutely use them, and and they they are fine, and they are fine to continue using them. There's nothing wrong with that. But maybe someone new to the ecosystem thinks like, why is there nothing first party? I just want to like get the blast solution and yeah. then set it up and be done with it. I don't want to have decision fatigue going through the internet and searching for five different solutions. So this is one um, reason. And the other reason is that um, we we don't know if you want like uh, the image optimization at build time or if you want it at runtime. Like if you want right. it at build time, then you use something like Vite Image Tools, which uh, transforms the images when you build uh, the project and then it's like all all there in your static assets folder. Um, or you maybe want to do it at runtime if your image is like coming from a CMS or uh, you just don't want to have long build times because it, it takes a little while to generate all these. And so you want to have an, an image CDN which does the job for you. And so we want to support both use cases and um, so oh, that's yeah, that's exciting because I I always used to like V image tools, but that yeah. just you you can't really do anything with the with the like images that you store in an in an API somewhere. Or like, right, 
for that you need in like a runtime exactly. solution yeah. and the all the images image cdns uh, give you like a runtime solution for this yeah so uh yeah. can you can you show us something yes oh exciting uh, let me see where do i so antonio here is asking what about font optimization is that next so that's, a, that's something <laughs> I've been, that's actually something I've been doing for the Svelte Summit website. Um, like get extracting like the, the characters that aren't used for the, for yeah. the text, but then. Yeah, that's, that's an entire, like, I guess, free week project in itself yeah. or more uh, to, to get it right. Um, so really tricky. So no, no, no immediate plans for that, but, uh, Maybe we get around to it eventually. Um, yep. Yeah, because the what you say this form subsetting, it basically requires the the application to know every character that is yeah. about to appear in your app, and uh, that's that's not easy that's, to figure out. Yeah, it's it, it might be easy like if it's a static website probably. Yeah, like you could crawl all the, all of the pages, but I mean that would take forever if it's a large site. <laughs> Yeah, it, it would. Okay, so then let me share my screen again. Um, okay, this one. Oh, yeah, wait. <laughs> nice. Let me quickly. All right, and move this out. Oh yeah, I have to get rid of this. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um, can we can we increase the the font size again? Uh, on they, on they, the on no, the I was, resulting. I was talking on the on the website. Yeah. yeah. On the website. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We we, let's, we don't let's really. Let's take need a look at this because, first. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, for, first, the usage, uh, you just import your image from Excel.js image. Right now, it's a standalone package. Um, you can use it with SvelteKit. You can also use it with uh, Vite on its own. So if you're using Vite, um, um, but without SvelteKit, you, you can also use it there. Um, the, the idea, maybe eventually we will integrate a title with SvelteKit, um, but we'll see. And for experimentation, it's nice to have it as a separate package. So for now, it's import image from SvelteJS image. And then um, there are two ways to use it, basically. The first way, which is the like runtime uh, version of this, is that you pass in a string into your source. Uh, and in this case, it points to images SvelteKit machine WebP, which uh, is inside my static folder. So in here in static, there's images and there's the image inside. And I have to give it a width and a height, which is required. Um, because if you don't do that, then uh, you have a layout shift because uh, the, the image wouldn't reserve space until it's loaded, until it knows how, how big it actually is. So it's uh, best practice to, to always give it a width and a height. Which, uh, which uh, should be the the natural uh, width and height of the of the image, and then you can also style it, pass in a style like uh, stretch to two hundred percent of the width you have, and adjust the height automatically. And you also always have to give it a alt alt tag, like uh, if the image is not loaded, or if you're a blind person using a screen reader, then you still should have like a, a good experience on the page. So you always have to put in an alt description. Nice. So that's, that's so, required on this component. Then. Yes, it is required. So if I, Perfect. if I don't uh, do this, then it should. OK, now it doesn't. I don't know why it doesn't right now. OK, I have live to coding. see why it does not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bug discovered live from stream. So <laughs> the types should, should warn you that alt is always required. Not sure why it doesn't work right now. Um, okay, so and what this does at um, at, um, at at dev time is just to 
take the source as is and uh, display it uh, exactly like this on the image. So if we're going into, can I, oh yeah, I can also, okay. Oh, nice. So if I log into the image, uh, what, what it generated is it just puts in the image machine web P at dev time. So at dev time, there's no, no real optimization happening. That makes sense. Um, because uh, like in in the set, case of, for example, the cell, the, the, the source set uh, changes to something like underscore the cell image or something. And uh, this right. isn't it available locally. So he would get all broken images and that, and that would suck for local development. I assume it could rack up quite a bill as well. Like if you're doing yeah. ch changing images <laughs> and stuff. Have you, have you right. thought about like doing, uh, doing it using Node? And sharp on on dev. Like, uh, no, we deliberately didn't didn't do this. But you could you could like provide your own provider, which I don't know if you have you you could uh, create your own little image endpoint and then create a, a runtime provider, which then rewrites your image so okay. that it um, d does this, um, but but not at dev time. At dev time, it does it does basically nothing. Okay. Um, so speaking of which, like how how does the image component know how to transform this? This is right now done through um, the uh, through a little config. So how you in, uh, set up this uh, SvelteJS image component is right now you import images from at SvelteJS image read, and then you put it inside the plugins array in your Vite config JS. And um, later on, uh, like my my dream is that you just like don't need this uh, when you're using SvelteKit and can instead configure stuff like this inside your Svelte config JS. So right. this is like my the the my my vision for this. But uh, right now in, in order to experiment and to find out uh, what the best API looks like, uh, we we deliberately didn't yeah. integrate it like that uh, yet. And you I guess you kind of always need to be able to provide, like the provider. Right, you always need provide. If you if you want to do runtime image optimization, like uh, I don't know, maybe maybe you all only want to do uh, the image optimization at build time, then you don't need to provide a provider. But if you do uh, want to do uh, runtime image optimization, then you do need to provide one. And Could you the image component would also want want you about this? Would it, would it make sense to have this as part of like the adapters? Maybe that wouldn't make sense. I don't know. Like you like could you get if you if you use the Vercel one, would it like configure it automatically? Yeah, the... yeah. That, that that's also another vision of mine. Like uh, if you have adapter Vercel, then you shouldn't like need to do this unless you just do it automatically. For some reason, have your images on another image provider, then you can set this explicitly, and then the adapter the cell would yep. not override it, but if it's like undefined, then it would automatically set the provider. So you don't need to do anything but install. Yep. Like this, this is like my my the the end goal that you just uh, install this package and it just it just works without uh, yep. any any config for the common case. But uh, yeah, right now uh, I need to have some little configuration here, and which is in this case I I need to set the default provider. You can have multiple because I don't know. Maybe you have some of your images on, on one image CDN and some others uh, on another. So you can set a default one, but you also can set a named one and then do import some some other file which which does so, this. So so where 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 do you set the the named one then? Do you specify that on the component? Yeah, right. So okay. so you then would do like provider equals named or I like okay. if you have named here and then this would be available here all right but that's probably in the advanced use case i i don't think that many people would need this yeah so there's a there's some questions here in the in the chat um does it not have a fill prop like next image i don't know what that is uh fill prop. yeah like the the fill prop and uh the or layout props in, in, in other libraries. This, this is something we, we still are like figuring out what's the 
what's the best opinionated way to to provide to provide this um yep. so so what for everyone else what the fill prop or uh, layout prop uh, would do is to uh, automatically add some styling to the image ah. uh, and in the case of fill i believe it uh, does position absolute and then uh, fills itself into the containing container with position relative so gotcha. top zero bottom zero and so on um and there are like several of these and we're still in the in the yeah we're still figuring out like uh do we do we want to provide some of these built in mm -hmm. um which ones do we want to provide and so for for the initial version we, do, we don't have this yet but uh we will maybe we will have it uh, later on okay cool um there's also is is there an option to use the picture element for the transformation? Right now, there's no option for the like. Right now, it's under the hood. All uh, everything's happening under the hood for the um, for the runtime image CDNs. It's it's it doesn't use a picture uh, tag at all. The the picture tag there are uh, like there are two use cases where you want to use the picture tag in, and one use case is. Well, actually, they are probably free, but the, the last one is hard to. Yeah, let, let's leave that one out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so the one one use case is um, you uh, do something called art direction, which means uh, I don't know on desktop you have a uh, photo of yourself, uh, and to the left and to the right there's a lot of like background visible. But if you're on a uh, horror, like a portrait mode uh, mobile phone, then your head will be very small compared to all the space in the right. background. And so you want to do something called art direction, which means on smaller screen sizes, you would want to serve a different image, which only shows you and the like in in the middle and the the background to the side is is cut off. So so there's one use case for um, the uh, picture. Um, element and the other one is that um, you want to serve different um, image formats to to the browsers and the browser then can decide which one to take so for example avif is uh, i think only recently supported in safari um, yep. very recently so uh, avif is probably uh, like not a good default, so you want to fall back to WebP uh, in case you have a browser which which doesn't know how to deal with Avith but knows how to deal with WebP. That makes but sense. this um, but but this um, use case can be handled by image CDNs, also through the image tag, because um, they can look at the uh, accept header that the browser sends to see what uh, formats the browser supports and then automatically uh, serve the, the, the best image format there. So the, the use case with different formats is uh, not relevant to image CDNs. Gotcha. So this leaves the art direction. And then, yeah, so, so having a picture component probably at some point we will have it, but uh, it requires a lot more thought like what what's the best way to make it easy to use in the ninety percent uh, use case, but flexible enough that you can also uh, use it in more advanced use cases? And so figuring that out is is really hard, especially for the picture tag. So yeah. that's why we only have the image component for now. And right. as I said, for the for the, the runtime, uh, we we don't use the image tag, but where we do use the image, uh, the the picture tag. I'm sorry, but where we do use the picture tag under the hood is for the uh, build time, um, for the build time version. So this is the second one here. Um, so if you have relative import to some file, then uh, we have a preprocessor which ultimately moves this like into an import. So Beat oh, can then nice. know, oh, okay, this is a this is an image import, and then the Beat image tools can run uh, uh, with our 
opinionated config and do the, the right things. And uh, you also don't need uh, within hate in that case anymore because that's uh, inferred from uh, VDimage tools. Like it, it knows what within hate the picture automatically yeah, has sense. because it loads it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So finally, we can have one component that does everything then. <laughs> Basically, <Excellent>. so <laughs> how 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 it looks like uh, when you're like this this one is the the static one, and if you look at it and you see it's a picture with tape, type uh, AVIF with a WebP format and it falls back to to something with the, with the image. So in in case the picture uh, tag is not supported in the browser, it will fall back to this one. All right, cool. And if we then deploy this on, like in, in this case on the cell, uh, then I can see that for the dynamic version, uh, can I... uh, in the dynamic version, you now see that it has this underscore the cell image prefix. And then like, and in this yeah. case, it actually did the transformation uh, to the source set. Uh, so that is what the runtime provider does. And in case of the dynamic, uh, the, the, the build time uh, optimization, it did, did all of the optimization at uh, build time. And so it generated all these different uh, versions of the image and pl placed them into unscribe immutable assets and then reference it yep. from there. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So how, how does the, like what, what goes into, maybe this is uh, a bit, uh, maybe it's not entirely decided yet, but like, what does a provider look like? Like is, is the Yeah. So far a provider. Do? Yeah. A, uh, let me see where it is. Where it is. So a provider, uh, for now, it just looks like this. It's an, it's a file. And it has a get URL um, function, which uh, should be exported. And what's required is that you get source and width. These are required. And then options, yep. maybe later on, we make it so that you can like also pass provider options if, mm -hmm. if that's necessary for some reason. And what this function uh, is responsible for is turning the the, the, the source into, into a URL that points to the image CDN. All right. Okay. So, so it's basically just a, so it takes a string like the URL string and then it like copies the, the string into all of the different versions of it and then returns it kind of. Right. Yeah. Cool. So it d doesn't look like it's too hard to write one of these on your own. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It oh, shouldn't great. be too hard. Because I've been looking at, uh, so I'm I'm a big fan of uh, there. There's a service called We Serve, which is like a free image resizing thing that that I use a lot. And I assume I could just write one for for that here. Yes, just, you could. Yes. Cool. I'll I'll see if I can I can do that at some point. So when is when is this image component coming? Are we doing um... that in the timeline? <laughs> so the first version is coming out uh, tomorrow, more but probably. Yep. So, um, yeah. So yeah, it will be zero point one. So <laughs> expect <laughs> uh, breaking changes uh, right. until it's uh, until it reaches uh, one point uh, I don't hope that we have like drastic breaking changes, um, but no promises. But I think it's. Uh, it's worthwhile to to get this out soon so people can experiment the, with it and give feedback. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I assume like how many things can actually change. It's it's just the component, right? Yeah. So if if there are breaking changes, like it it shouldn't be that that bad. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Maybe more on the on the like on the on the provider side then rather if you like yeah if if you're just using the components probably. Not too bad. Fine, All right, yeah. cool. Uh, so uh, I I think that that was it for for us today. Uh, 
almost one hour on the dot. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, Simon, for, for joining us and talking about uh, Svelte 4 image components and the Zira for typing that we got a couple of months ago. Um, and I hope to see you again here in, at sure. some point. All right. Uh, and right. thanks for everyone that's uh, watching and listening. We'll, we'll be back next month in June uh, on the first Wednesday of the month. So we'll, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.